Hello, everyone. Give me just one moment. Um, okay, just turning down some volume settings there. Uh, oh, actually, hang on. One more volume setting. Okay, there. Um, <clears throat> hello, everyone, and welcome to a new Let's Play. My name is Pem. I am commonly known as the Loathsome Casual. I have a YouTube Let's Play channel, which I imagine if you're watching this video, you have been exposed to before. Um, I am going to start a Let's Play of The Elder Scrolls IV Oblivion. And if you are uh, at all familiar with my channel, perhaps you've watched my subscriber specials, in particular my 2000 subscriber special, in which I laid out for everyone what my forecasted plan was for my channel, uh, which did not include Oblivion in my next few games. I've changed the plan because uh, due to some circumstances I didn't foresee, <clears throat> I've actually come across some really great mods for Oblivion, and I've playtested all the mods in anticipation of doing a Let's Play of it. And given how far into the future my Let's Play of Oblivion was planned to be, I just can't bear to wait. So this is literally me at my most impulsive. I am actually saying to you, I can't stand not playing this game for you guys, and I absolutely must play it. So, um, in a sense, I'm apologizing because this is not the way that I plan to do this. But in another sense, screw it. This is what I want to do, and this is what I'm going to do. This is not going to interrupt my current Let's Plays when this started, which were um, Mass Effect, the original Mass Effect, and Let's Play Crusader Kings 2. I will start by uploading this only on Sundays, which is currently a day that I don't upload any videos. Um, when one of those LPs finishes, whichever one finishes first, I'll upload on that LP's schedule. So either Monday, Tuesday, Monday Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. Um, but for now, it's just going to be one day a week, just on Sundays. So you guys will get a taste, and that's going to be it. But I, I was so excited about this game because I've got the mods all lined up. Everything works right now, God willing, everything works. And I have, I think, a, a pretty fun idea for a character. So, let's get right to it, shall we? We'll start a new game. I literally playtested this game for about 50 hours with all the mods installed, and that's part of the reason why I can't wait to get the LP started. If I had, like, playtested for, like, five hours, I was like, yeah, 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 everything works, fine, whatever. I would have put it on hold and done my regular schedule the way that I planned to do. I'm sorry, we're skipping that, because that's not part of my character's story. Um, but, um, having playtested it for that long, the more that I playtested it, the more I was like, oh god, I have to do this game, like, right away, I cannot wait to do this game. So, as I said, me at my most, um, impulsive. Now, the character, right, because we are role-playing this game as much as is possible in the true fashion of a Sorcerer Dave, Variax, Squee, Zemolf, uh, Spray and Pray, and Mark the Lone Gamer, and Nyasa Gaming. All these people do fantastic role plays of Elder Scrolls games. I'm going to try to do it in the vein of those great LPers. So, let's tell you a little bit about the character. Well, first off, we're playing as a male. Secondly, I have a number of mods installed, which you'll be able to see in the description of this video. So when we go through these races, you'll see a whole bunch of things that you're not used to seeing if you played this game of Oblivion. Uh, vanilla. But bear with me. We're just going to kind of skip through here. Mazken, yes, that's something you're probably not used to seeing unless you play modded. Omis, something, again, you're not used to seeing. Perhaps. Omis Rot. Orc. Redguard, these are standard. Sea Elf. Wood Elf. Shivilai, Argonian, Oriel, Breton, yes, Daedra Seducer, complete with wings, even, pretty crazy that one, but we're not playing as that one either, we're playing as a Dark Elf, yes, a Dark Elf, yes, 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 a Dark Elf, it says, known as Dunmer in Morrowind, 
The Dark Elves are noted for their balanced integration of magic and combat. They're granted a medium magic bonus, faster magic regeneration, and heavy resistances to fire and disease, but bear a weakness to shock, which is unfortunate, but anyway. They can summon an Ancestral Guardian, which is a very nice skill to have. Uh, return. Hair. Let's get a good look at the hair here. I think we're going to go with like a really good badass haircut, because I'll tell you a little bit about my character as we go here. Uh, I'll tell you his name here at the end, but I'll tell you what his background is. He's very young, actually. He's probably in his mm, late 20s, early 30s, which for an elf is, of course, very young. Um, he grew up on mainland Morrowind, not on Varnfell. He grew up uh, in southwestern Morrowind. There's actually a town I'm thinking of, Ald Ulik, I think is the name of the town. It's right near a lake. Uh, in southwestern Morrowind, which doesn't appear in most of the maps, but it does appear in the book 2920 as the site of one of the battles between uh, the Emperor Remen III, I think, and the Tribunal. That's where he grew up, uh, on a farm actually near there. Uh, his father is a Whitweek farmer. Uh, sorry, Wickwheat Farmer. I'm not pronouncing that correctly because I've already had a couple glasses of wine tonight. That's what made me impulsive to start this LP in the first place. <laughs> sorry, everyone. Um, yes, his father was a Wickwheat Farmer and had a pretty extensive farm. Um, but our character has an older brother who is set to inherit the farm. And his father sent him to Vivek City. To become, of all things, an ordinator. He said, son, you're not going to inherit the farm. You might as well make something of yourself. We're going to send you to Vivek City. You're going to become an ordinator. And the son was like, are you freaking kidding me? Because that is absolutely not the kind of person I am. Our character, whose name, again, I will tell you in just a moment, is, oh, a moth priest, um, is actually much more of a bookish type. Not quite a mage, but he really enjoys learning things. Um, but he still carries some of his father's... Um, what's the word I'm looking for? Black hair. Yeah, there we go. He still carries some of his father's ties to the land. Um, so while he enjoys learning about things, he doesn't really enjoy spending time in a classroom. He likes being out in nature, learning what nature has to offer. And because of where he's from and how he grew up, he's become quite a bit of an herbalist. He really enjoys um, mixing and matching plants and animal ingredients and trying to make new potions. That's his, his real forte. His real skill is in potion making, alchemy, um, which I think is a natural outgrowth of what his father does on the farm. His mother uh, died when he was young. Um, probably between 10 and 15 his mother died. So the only person he had left, the only adult he had left in his life was his father and his brother, who was slightly older than him, who of course was going to inherit the property. Um, so, very young man, very young elf, and a very darkly complected elf, we're going to say. Um... And his name, well, his face. We need to randomize his face, I think. Yes. We're going to just randomize it till we find a face that fits the character that I have in mind here. Just bear with me while I click around here. Actually, mm, yeah. Yes, I'll say, but I'm going to change his complexion a little bit. Make him even darker of a dark elf. And reduce his age just a bit. Well, right there. So this is our man, right here. Dunmer, with a mohawk. A badass mohawk at that, if I might add. Um, father was a farmer, a wickwheat farmer. That's where he grew up in southwestern Morrowind, very close to the um, Cyrodiil border, I might add. Um, and his mother is passed away 
brother is inheriting the farm. He was sent to be an ordinator in Vivek City, and which was a bit of a surprise to him because he doesn't really have the skills, he doesn't think. He was very much a scientific sort of lad, a learning sort of lad, and didn't really think he had the fighting skills in him. But his father wanted to find something for him to do, so sent him off to Vivek City to become trained as an ordinator. He trained there for a very short time before it was realized by the ordinators themselves that this young man does not have what it takes to become an ordinator. And they kicked him out. And he returned to the farm, and his father said, You've got to make a name for yourself somewhere. You need to get going. Move on. You're not going to stay here as competition for your brother. The farm is already spoken for. So our young man returned to Vivek City, dejected, lonely, lost, and being sick of looking at Vivek City as the site of his biggest failure, he felt. He booked passage on a boat, which took him to the Imperial City. And here in the Imperial City, he hopes to make a name for himself. He wants one thing above all others, to continue his research into alchemical ingredients and to continue his potion making. He wants to, if possible, create potions that no one has ever created before. Um, a second thing that he wants to do, because he admires his father, and because he admires his brother, and because he admired a lot the older Dunmer who led the ordinators in Vivek City, he wants to eventually someday become a leader of men and mare. He recognizes that that's something that he's probably not naturally suited for, that he needs to build up to it. But he would like to do that someday. Um, and the third thing he would like to do is to make his fortune, because as I said, he's essentially been uh, not exactly disowned by his family. Uh, he's still a welcome member, and he's welcome to come back home, but he has no um, livelihood from them. He's been completely cut off. He has a little bit of cash that his father gave him when he left for Vivek City the first time to become an ordinator, um, but otherwise he has no property to his name. And he has no claims on any property to his name. So he wants to make his fortune. So three things he wants to do. Continue his alchemical studies. Someday, by the end of his lifetime, become a leader of men. Something with some oomph to it. You know, some kind of position of authority. And thirdly, to... Um, oh god, what was the third thing? I just forgot it. Oh my god, I forgot it. To make his fortune. Yes, to make his fortune. Out in the world. So what is this young man's name? Well, I won't tell you his true name for now. I will tell you what his mother called him as a nickname. Because as a child, as I said, he was very bookish. He was very much not interested in the family business of farming. He was more so interested in just grabbing ingredients out of his father's farm and combining them and seeing what they came up with. He was very much uh, a... Uh, lack of a better term, he was a wimp. You know, he was he was not a physical person at all. He was not aggressive. He was not forceful. Um, and his mother, as a result, called him, when he was growing up, Nebish. That's what she called him. Despite the badass haircut, despite the fierce-looking eyebrows, this young man is, for all intents and purposes, a total weakling. He has no physical abilities other than what he gathered from his few days of training with the Ordinators, and he has no real forceful psychological powers. He doesn't have the forces of persuasion, he's not much of a speaker, he can't convince anybody of anything. He's just kind of a wimp. And his name is Nebish. If you were going to think of a character type for him, imagine say, Rick Moranis in any role he ever played in a film, and you have a pretty good idea of what our character's going to be. Not exactly that character, but start off with the Rick Moranis character, and you'll have an idea of what he's going to be. So, there we go. This is Nebish. It's very nice to meet you, everyone. Yes, we're sure. Now, we are, as I said, playing modded, uh, so there's going to be a whole range of mods kicking in right now. One of the mods that we're playing with is oh, hang on, is um, the alternate start mod. So of course we start in a boat, and as I said, our hero here, Nebish, is traveling to um, Cyrodiil to find his fortune. F 
from Vivek City in Morrowind. Um, he has arrived on a boat to the Imperial City. He traveled southeast. Well, actually, he traveled east from the Inner Sea out to the whatever hell sea that is, the ocean, basically, to the east of Morrowind. Traveled south along the cro coast around Black Marsh. Uh, and then once he reached uh, the Topol Bay, he traveled up the Nimine River Valley Basin straight up to the Imperial City. And this is all on the same boat. This boat was going from Vivek, Vivek City to the Imperial City. For who knows what, but he managed to gain passage on it. Um, so let's finish our character setup here before we set foot in the Imperial City. We already did our race, so we'll do our birth sign. He was born under the sign of the... where is it? Thief. Which says, gifted with physical grace, sure step, and good fortune. Those born under the, the thief gain a 10 point bonus to their agility, speed, and luck attributes. Now, he is not a thief by any means, but this is the sign that he was born under. So, we'll continue with that. And we'll carry on. Specializations. We're creating a custom class here. Um, is it the Pilgrim? No, which one is it? The Scout is where we start. So, our custom class is going to be specialized in stealth, even though, as I said, our character is not really a thief. But that's where he starts. Um, oh, I actually forget. I had these selected. Uh, strength and agility, I think, is what I picked. Which, oops. Okay, I meant to go. Okay, hang on. I meant to read what it said. Strength affects how much you can carry, how much fatigue you have, and how much damage you can do with melee weapons, such as swords and axes. Governs the skills of blunt, blade, and hand-to-hand. -hand. And agility, which affects your ability to maneuver and balance. Your total fatigue and damages, uh, damage done by bows. Governs the skills of security, sneak, and marksman. Right, so now when it comes to skills. Seven major skills. He is skilled with acrobatics. With alchemy, of course. Um, athletics. He's had to train a lot to become, to even be considered for the Ordinators, even though he didn't actually stick in their program very long before he was kicked out. He has some skill in Blade. Uh, he has decent skill in Light Armor, as that's pretty much the only armor that he could come in contact with living out in a rural area of uh, southwestern Morrowind. He's pretty handy with a bow. Growing up on a farm, very often he and his brother had to go out and hunt for their own food. Um... He can sneak a decent amount. He's not a, uh, an expert at it, but he can do it when it's needed. Uh, he can stay hidden. And what did I miss? I think I'm missing... Whoa. No, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. No, that's all, that's all his seven major skills. Sneak, marksman, light armor, blade, athletics, alchemy, and atrobat uh, acrobatics. And the name for our class, our boy Nebish is an herbalist. Yes, we do want to be an herbalist. Social status? <clears throat> well, as I said, he grew up a farmer. So let's see if we can set uh, manual labor. I guess that counts as farmer. Uh... I've committed crimes, but never been arrested, I'll say. And, and again, he's never intentionally committed crimes, but he's also not exactly a... Mm, he's no angel. He's no white sheet. You know. Farm laborer was the job that I held, and my financial situation, not comfortably well off. Uh, as I said, I'm basically a... Mm, I'm not disowned, but a disinherited, disinherited son of a farmer, so I'm rather poor. My point of entry into Cyrodiil is the Imperial City. Do I have any diseases? I do not. And that's it. So our character creation is all complete, and our mods, I think, are all set up. So let's then arrive in the Imperial City.
couple more mods might kick in here. I'm not sure. I don't actually recall. Let's check the time. 11 o'clock in the morning on Monday, the 27th of Last Seed, which I think is August. Third era, 4.33. Here we are in Cyrodiil. Our first real good look, because as, I, as it was obvious, I think, from the opening, we were below decks. So we didn't really get a good look at, uh, at Cyrodiil as we approached. This is our bag, so let's grab our material here. We have a dark, screen, a dark green shirt, laced leather pants, stitched leather shoes, three apples, three bread loaves, nine potatoes, 46 lockpicks, lock one pitchfork, which we presumably carried away from our father's farm, six repair hammers, one scythe, same thing, carried away from our father's farm, and two topazes. Don't know how we came across that, but okay. And if you'll forgive me for one moment, this is something I never liked about Oblivion, but let me try this. I'm trying to give my character a torch. Because you don't start the game with a torch, but I think it only makes sense that you would... Uh, oh, I don't have number lock on, apparently. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, I have to do it this way. Nine F and one. Oh crap! That's not gonna do it, is it? No, I missed it. Sorry, 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 sorry. I missed a character there. Let me just try this one more time. If I don't get it this time, I'll do it off camera. Two C F nine F. One. Yes. Okay, I think that did it. Let's check. I should have a torch. Good. I have a torch. Okay. All right. So let's get this sorted out. Then we want this to be uh, one. We want. Hmm, actually, hang on. Can I do a key remap from here? I can't. Can I? Controls, maybe. Yes. Auto move, I'm going to make you. And that will open up. Um, that will open up. Whoops. Okay, I might have to work on that. Hang on. Nope, okay, hang on. Where is it? Surely I have. Oh, it doesn't give me Q as an option. Okay. Rats. Well, let's actually delete that then. One will be use torch. Um, two will be my weapon. There. Sorry, I guess I could turn. Sorry, everyone. Sorry. Sorry. I guess I could turn that back to Q, couldn't I? I was thinking I'd make torch Q because Q. I don't really use auto walk too often. Also, let's do a hard save here now that we've gone through all of that business. Right. Well, it's going to be lunchtime sh soon, so let's. Speak. Speak. You guys speak. You want to talk to each other. Let's head into the city then and find a place where we can do some lunch. Now, as I what said. Is it, citizen? This uh, LP is heavily modded. Want? A ton of mods in this LP. What is it? Um, which I'm very excited about. Um, I will tell you that I think this LP will go on for some time. I, I can't guarantee that, of course, but I think that it will go on for some time. Um, and I will s tell you right now, before we get into it, the quest lines that we'll figure in. The very first act of this LP will be almost entirely a quest line of, um... Hmm. Well, it will be exploration, basically. Um, I think that the Fighters Guild quest line will figure into this LP a bit, as will a quest line from a mod that I have installed, which if you look through the mod description, the, the video description here, 
you may be able to pick out which mod it is I'm talking about, but um, that will all happen much, much later in the LP. For now, our young man Nevish is in the Imperial City to explore Cyrodiil and, as I said, make his fortune, continuing his alchemical learning. That's why he's here. So, we're, if you couldn't already tell, we're just kind of checking things out, but we're headed to the Market District. We at least have gotten directions on where that is. We want to sit down and have some lunch. And here we are. And my frame rate takes a little bit of a hit. And there are children walking around the Imperial City, believe it or not. Hello. What can I do for you, she says. Uh, nothing, I suppose. Greetings. Cyrodiilic children. Nevish is a little peaked to see that. Very foggy day here in the Imperial City. Ah, patio. Wonderful place to have some lunch. So let's just have a bite here and we'll go through and take a uh, stock of what we actually have. So here we are. Nevish the Dark Elf. Born under the birth sign, the thief. He's an herbalist. He's level one. Health, 66. Currently only 64 of 66. We'll get into why that is a moment later. Magicka, 146 of 185. Fatigue, 147 of 174. His strength is naturally 40, currently 39. Intelligence, naturally 35. Willpower, naturally 40. Agility, naturally 55. Speed, naturally 50. Endurance, naturally 45. Personality, naturally 35. Luck, naturally 60. That's the one area where he excels, I'd say. Major skills, of course, athletics, 25. Blade, 25. Alchemy, 25. Acrobatics, 30. Light armor, 35. Marksman, 35. And sneak, 30. Minor skills, the only ones that are noteworthy, illusion, mysticism at 15. That's about it. No factions. No accomplishments. And all this is not for dealing with right now. Anyway, uh, again, in our inventory, we're wearing our traveler's boots, qu cuirass, and greaves. We have only an iron dagger to our name and an arrow case, which we'll get into a little bit later. Some food, a few flare scrolls, a few heal minor wound scrolls, uh, empty canteens, which we'll need to fill up at our earliest convenient. A uh, convenience, a few lockpicks, a pitchfork, a scythe, scythe rather, six repair hammers, a couple of topazes which we could sell, and one torch. As far as what we know, we're able to uh, conjure an ancestor guardian because we're a Dunmer. We have the skill battle meditation as well, which is added by a mod, which restores eight magicka per second for 120 seconds, uh, which won't do us too much good. But the fire shield might. 10% fire shield for 120 seconds. We have the ability to set up camp if we were to buy a tent. And we can appraise our own bow, which we probably won't do too often. Of course, we have the scrolls as well. Active effects. We have a weakness to shock because of our Dunmer heritage. We fortify luck, speed, and agility based on the thief burst sign. Fortify Magicka based on our Dunmer heritage. Well, actually, our Mare heritage. Resist disease because we're a Dunmer. Resist fire because we're a Dunmer. Restore fatigue from the fact that we have just recently eaten a potato, an apple, and a bread loaf. Restore Magicka because we're a Dunmer. And we have weak endurance because who knows why. Um, and then last but not least... Our log and map. This is the area that we are visiting. Cyrodiil. Cyrod. The Imperial Province. We're going to explore... Well, I don't know where we'll explore. We'll explore probably a little bit of everywhere by the time this is all over. But this is what we're checking out. We have an especial interest in, of course, first checking out the Imperial Isle. Because this is where we are. Our goal is going to be to find some uh, alchemical ingredients we can experiment with. This is a pretty good place to start, right? No active quests. Current quests. Um, well, really, there's a, the only the only ones that we have currently are that um, 
we should check out the sewer for the Emperor's uh, amulet, the El Adabal, but of course we're not going to be doing that because the, well, I guess I haven't told you this yet, but the main quest won't figure into this LP, or at least not as I've planned it currently, so we can hide that. And this one, the Gift of Kinnereth, which we may come back to at some point, but it's not going to be one that we're going to focus on to begin with. As I said, this guy's story, Nebish's story, is one that is purely his own, um, and we'll build it as we go from there. So, uh, none of the starting quests are going to be quests that he's going to worry about. I won't hide that one, though, for now. And then the completed quests, one is, these are both actually mods, um, it says, it is perfect to beguile one's eventide. At candle at least is in, uh, a candle at least is incumbent on forethought. Inhabitants of Cyrodiil will use torches outside uh, when it's the evening. And then it says, to fathom the unseen is to beckon the offering of enlightenment. Enemies of Cyrodiil will use torches inside dark places. So when we're encountering uh, NPCs outside and in dungeons, they'll be using torches when it's uh, nighttime, of course. Or when they're in a dungeon, of course, where it's dark. This is a, also a mod. Um, and let me say, before we get into the actual action of the LP proper, I just want to pay a special shout-out to YouTube user Leix, who is a uh, subscriber of mine, as well as a subscriber of a number of other LPers who I'm, I also regularly watch. I've seen him uh, on a number of other channels. He has provided me literally invaluable information in getting this mod setup created. Um, and again, you can see all the mods in the description of this video. Uh, Leix is responsible for almost every mod that I have installed. Uh, rather, let me rephrase that. He's not responsible for them, but he is responsible for telling me about them and recommending them. Um, and so the, the entirety of this LP, in terms of what this character does and how he is able to do it, owes a very big debt to Leix. So thank you very much, Leix, for that. Uh, and I'll probably thank you again throughout the LP because that's just how how much of an influence you've had on this LP. How much gold do we have? We have zero. So what's our first goal going to be? Well, it's going to be to make a little bit of money on top of trying to find some alchemical ingredients. So here we are in Cyrodiil, in the Imperial City. Just afternoon, we had a lunch. And our next step is to explore and make some cash. Let's do that now, shall we? <laughs> 